Hello and welcome to the short video on writing emails. So one of the main things we need to remember about emails are that if it, is, if it is to a company or someone important, then formal language and tone is needed. If it is to family and friends, it can be more relaxed and informal. Another thing to remember before we start is that when you do an email, you need to fill out the sections in the template um, in the assessment one for the address and the subject. So emails are similar to a letter in format, such as the greeting, the introduction and the body of the text. These are in paragraphs and then you also would need a suitable conclusion and clause. So let's have a look at this activity. Again, um, if you watched the previous videos, we would look at tapping the text. So what is this text type? We know it's an email. We'll have a look and we'll see who the audience is and what the purpose is. So you're writing an email to a friend. Your town holds an annual music festival and last year you attended, it had a great and you had a great time. This year you'd like to invite a friend who lives in another town to visit and enjoy the festival with you. You are writing an email to persuade your friend to come and the image below contains information that you may find useful for the activity. So to tap the text, you know the text is an email, you know it is to a friend, is the audience, and it is to persuade. So email, friend, and persuade. So let's have a look at this activity. This is a possible response. And by looking at other examples, we're going to become familiar with the type of content that, that's needed, as well as expectations of what the examiner will be looking for. So these are the total possible marks. I'll give you a few moments to go through the answers to see what you would in the mark scheme to see what you would actually give this piece of writing. So first of all, for the content and detail, um, although word count isn't specified in this email, it is an appropriate length. And the email contains a range of detail from the image and meets the needs and purpose of the audience. So it was given four marks. The format structure and language, the format is accurate. It doesn't limit communication and you can clearly see it has a start, middle and end. The language is appropriate for the audience and the purpose. And for the organisation, that was given one mark. It contains paragraphs, but the sentence structure is basic. So in total, that learner scored eight out of 11. So let's have a look at the same piece of writing, but now we are going to be looking at the spelling, punctuation and grammar. So again, imagine you are the examiner. What would you be giving this learner for the spelling, punctuation and grammar? It's out of a total of nine, so each one is out of a total of three. Again, you may want to pause the recording while you do this. So let's go through the answers. So for the spelling, there are some errors with common and compound words, such as the word course and campsite, festival, circus and sea. So this um, learner seems to have an issue with homophones. So do be careful when you are writing that you are using the correct word. Errors in this case can affect the meaning. So it was given one mark. The punctuation, however, is mostly accurate. There's some attempted exclamation marks and question marks. So this was given two. The grammar, there are minor errors, but nothing that's undermining the meaning. So again, it was given two marks and this learner scored a total of five marks out of a possible nine for their spelling, punctuation and grammar. So if you combine both that and the first section, the, this learner scored 13 out of 20. Thank you for watching this short video on emails and I hope you found it helpful.